I'm Kev. And I'm Steve. And we're from the internet. Want to support the show? Do all your Amazon shopping through we'refromtheinternet.com slash Amazon, and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but we get a little kickback on everything you buy. What were you like as a teenager? Oh, I was terrible. I was just an absolute bum hater. I'm uh, sure we're not swearing you, on this. You've not changed much then, eh? <laughs> no. Um, I'm certain my dad and possibly my mum are both on blood pressure tablets because of me and my teens. My sister wasn't a, a monster at all. She was really good. Um, Did you grow up in The Simpsons? Is that what this was? I po- pretty much. I mean, I, I, I've gone from probably Bart Simpson to Homer Simpson over the years, and I'll end up Grandpa Simpson before I go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was I was just a nightmare, I think. Um, Why were you a nightmare? But I wasn't, I wasn't like you? naughty or anything. I didn't do anything ridiculously bad. I just had a lot of, over, you know, you know me, I'm argumentative. Really? Yeah, and um, I just would always, always, always have raging arguments that went far too far. And Did you get punched in the face or No, I think my dad showed incredible restraint. <laughs> I meant by random oh, right, no. <laughs> did, did your father beat you? <laughs> what a revelation that would have been. <laughs> yes. Break down into tears. No, no, I think I've told, told you this before, um, but people used to get hit in the face on my behalf an awful lot growing up. Um, it was one of those bizarre little quirks where I'd be out drinking and I don't know, I'd be, I was messing around in the street and I'd nip into KFC and then someone would come bursting through the door. Which one of you lot was chasing that girl around outside? And we'd only been like playing a game or whatever. And he'd come up and start having a go at me. And then he'd just turn to someone next to me and wallop him in the face as hard as he could and say, why aren't you sticking up for your mate? And then just storm off. And that sort of thing just happened constantly. I'd just be doing something completely innocent and then a completely innocent bystander would get punched because I was doing this innocent thing that wasn't hurting anyone. And it was inexplicable. It was probably part of growing up in Greys. It probably happened to a lot of people. But, yeah, I just seem to get other people hit and annoy people constantly, cause arguments constantly. Um, I used to run a blog that just turned into a daily argument with me and my mates constantly. Um, so you really haven't changed at all in the 30 years since <laughs> I do run a daily blog now that doesn't cause arguments. Well, it causes arguments in my house occasionally. Why is that? Because Anna will say, sheepdogs said, and I'll go, I don't care <laughs> what he's got in his park <laughs> before she can finish her sentence. And then I get the, there's no need to be like that. He's your friend. <laughs> I don't care what he's doing on his boring blog. Yeah, well, you should care. It's it's not always boring. Am I mentioned on it regularly? Sometimes. I'd like someone to just, in fact, this is a job for you, internet. Every time I'm mentioned on his blog, just sort of copy and paste the ten words either side of my name and just email them to me. <laughs> That's the only bits I care about. The rest of it, just summarise in a sentence once a week. But the bits that I'm involved in, I want to know what he's saying about me so I know whether I need to have him killed or not. I stopped turning it into a rant so that Anna could keep reading it. Um, oh, she reads it. She just, whenever she tries to read it to me, I stop her in her tracks. Yeah, but I, uh, I was doing like a daily rant and then she just she didn't approve, so I stopped. Good, no one approves. Um, I... I my teenage years were weird. I sort of went through a number of metamorphoses. Right. Um, I went from being quite sporty and playing. <laughs> no, really, I played I for that. played for all the school teams. I played football. Well, let me get this right: football, rugby, cricket, and basketball. Clearly, it doesn't count. I didn't do any of that. Um, so I played for all four of them, but then my knee exploded, and it and my knee exploded in France and. Basically, a World Cup final. It was near the World Cup final, actually. <laughs> um, I tripped over the guide rope thing for the caravan awning and just landed funny. My knee exploded and my dad didn't believe it really hurt, so made me go and walk up all the steps inside a castle and that made it even worse. And, and there then, went your footballing career. Well, yeah, eventually, about a month later, I went to the doctors back in England and he just said, yeah, your knees, uh, that's bad, isn't it? Um, and I had some scans and stuff, and basically my kneecap had sort of semi-dislocated a little bit, and the ligaments and the tendons were all a bit... <laughs> I couldn't do sport anymore without having my knee massively strapped up. That was when I was about 14, probably. Then I got really fat, 
and did well in my GCSEs because all I did, <laughs> all I did was eat, books. eat curly whirlies and read. Um, and then you didn't I, change. No, because then in the summer uh, between my GCSEs and starting my A levels, I got uh, one of those individual trampolines, <laughs> and I used to jump up and down on the trampoline in my parents' garage, listening to Cheryl Crow and Alanis Morissette albums. That's been you for an entire summer. <laughs> for an entire summer, when I used to write down my calories that I'd eat every single day, and basically it was Operation Get a Girlfriend. And I went back to school at the start of sixth form with new contact lenses. I hadn't worn contact lenses since I finished playing football. Um, but I started wearing contact lenses again. I'd lost about four stone. And I went back and I got a girlfriend. And that was awesome, which meant I ruined my A-levels because I now had a girlfriend. Yeah, I ruined my A-levels um, and girlfriend. And then to round off my, my teenage years of one extreme to the other, um, I had all these awesome GCSEs and a child before I turned 20 and a wife before I turned 20 who wasn't the same one who was the girlfriend that I did the trampolining for. Very unusual teenage years. Surely, and that's why I'm such a I, well-rounded individual I now. I could probably trump the, the very unusual. Um, I went through a, a brief phase where half of my friends were convinced I was having periods. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, and my parents wouldn't believe the agony I was in. This is what reminded me, your knee agony reminded me. Once a month, I'd get excruciating pains in either of my sides, and I'd be doubled over in agony all night, almost in tears at times. And um, one day, I was—it was like four in the morning—and I was crying my eyes. I was in absolute agony. I couldn't move. And finally, after this happening on and off for like yeah months, because it, it had become the ongoing joke. That was it was, every twenty-eight days? It was, a, it was like every four weeks, pretty much. And so that's why it became. Did you, the... did you panic when you didn't get the pain? <laughs> yeah, I thought I was pregnant. No, but um, my parents took me to hospital one morning, um, and we sat in A and E for ages. I took a urine sample, and I think I, I must have mentioned before it was basically black. And we were just like, what the hell has happened? Like, my kidneys must be exploding or something. So uh, my mum's, like, force-feeding me water constantly, trying to help me kind of get over the pain. And the doctors took the sample away. And then about four hours later, they come back. and like, we haven't got a sample for you anyway. Can we take another one? And when I did that one, it was just clear and completely normal. <laughs> and the pain had gone. And so they were like, well, there's nothing wrong with you. And they sent me off home. And then... Um, we were talking about it a couple of days later, me and my parents. They kind of asked me what I'd been eating and drinking. And it, we established that for the year before, um, because there was a vending machine at my college that gave out free drinks if you hit it just right. I'd been having some like 16 cans of Dr. Pepper a day. <laughs> and so when I went to the hospital and took a urine sample, it was basically pure Dr. Pepper with, with no urine in it at all. So almost. bottom line, if you drink 16 cans of Dr. Pepper a day, it takes about a month for that to cause a problem in your body. Yeah. And then it passes. It and passes like, once you get over do you, it. Yeah. Do you stop drinking the Dr. Pepper while it passes? What? or do you, Does it just pass and then you've got another month? Uh, it seems you just have another month. Is it worth the the day of pain? It was the horrible. Delicious... I always now um, probably win myself a lot of friends by telling women I know exactly how they feel <laughs> <laughs> but I really do I lived it it was horrible worst time ever interesting and uh, yeah big takeaway from this episode Steve has periods used to want to get your question answered on a future episode of we're from the internet head over to we're from the internet dot com slash question tweet your questions at Kevin Steve Email kevinsteve at gmail.com or post them at facebook.com slash kevinsteve or even leave them in the comments for this episode. Mm-hmm.